Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to night two of the 2022 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series. Tonight we are going to dye a variegated neon rainbow colorway using some of the 1% stock solutions we mixed up in last night's video. I wanted to create a colorway that would give us like a non-striped progression, something that would have elements of each of the colors on either side of it. So as you transition, there's a little bit more of a fade, still variegated, but it'll make the lines in between the colors a little bit more blurry, especially if you blend them with say garter stitch or alternating rounds or something like that. Before we jump into today's project, please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I do specials like this where we have nightly videos a couple times a year and they're so much fun and you really don't want to miss it. But now let's go take a look as we dye two different versions of a variegated neon rainbow yarn using the exact same color palette. Today we are going to be playing with 1% stock solutions of a bunch of fluorescent acid dye colors using Dharma acid dyes in fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, and purple pop. Frozen blue is the blue I like to use with these other bright colors. It's not fluorescent, uh, but I think it pairs really nicely with them. And so we'll be using these stock solution bottles to create our variegated rainbow set. Eventually, I think we will probably dye each of the individual six colors for the sets in their own pan, but I thought it would be fun to start off with a single pan approach because I mean, it's just a lot of fun and adds a little bit more randomness to everything. I'm going to be dyeing three different yarn bases today. We've got Wool to Dye Force Crazy 8, which is a DK weight yarn, 100% superwash merino. We've got Sheila's Sparkle, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% silver Selena. And then we have That Yak, which is 70% merino wool, superwash merino wool, 20% yak, 10% nylon. And I am going to arrange these like so. So we're going to go glitter, yak, crazy eight, glitter, yak, crazy eight, etc. And the reason why I'm putting the yak in the middle, even though this might uh, make my brain hurt a little bit, is that I want to make sure that I do get dye on the yak and I don't want it on the edge because the yak when wet it can be harder to tell when you get coverage. But my goal is to layer the colors and I guess I'll talk about this while we do it but say like if this group of three is going to be primarily pink. I also want pink a little bit of pink here and a little bit pink here on the purple. Uh, if this group is going to be primary yellow, I want a little bit of orange and a little bit of green on it. And so that's going to be my plan. Now, fluorescent dyes like these do spread a lot. And so we'll be dyeing these minis as twisted mini skeins, which should be really fun. <laughs> and add just a little bit more randomness into everything as well and potentially leave some white behind for these colors. I am going to pre-soak the yarn already in the pan. I'm coming in with eight cups of water that has four tablespoons of white vinegar in it. And we're not necessarily going to use all of the water, but I figured that this was a reasonable starting point. With the exception of frozen, all of these dyes that we're using typically require more heat, acid, and time to absorb and bind to the yarn. And one thing that you might notice is that we do have space along either edge of the pan. And so in theory, depending on some of our color placement, we could see colors escape and spread uh, down there. And so that's one thing I am honestly a little bit curious about as well. So I'm, I don't know, I'm very, very excited. And I am pressing the yarn down to help get things as saturated as possible. And I am gonna let all the yarn sort of sit in here for at least 30 minutes before we go to start heating things up. And 
I might come and press occasionally. There is absolutely gonna be some resist in here just because it's all packed in. And, you know, I would say I'm still undecided if we will end up flipping the yarn at some point or not. I think we'll see how the colors absorb. And the real question about flipping is because if the colors haven't set yet, if I lift the yarn here, then that's gonna allow some color in the sides to come and get in right there. So it's possible that we're gonna do a process of this, let it cool almost completely for the colors to absorb, and then flip and add color to the other side. So we will see how it goes. But uh, now let's wait at least 30 minutes. Over the course of the pre-soak, we no longer have water at the edges. So off to the side, I have a turkey baster <laughs> in some water that was eight cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar that I can add to the edges as needed to just make sure that there's a little bit of liquid there because I don't want things to dry out because we don't want anything to burn. <laughs> that would be bad. But now I'm going to turn on the heat. Uh, I am on two burners of this stove top and we're gonna wait for things to get hot and steamy so then we can come in and start layering color. And I am so excited. And actually to aid with getting more heat throughout the whole pan, I'm going to just quickly pop some uh, tin foil over it and then reduce the heat to medium. This is gonna trap some of the steam in here and with the burners not on as high, it means that the edges of the pan will not get as warm as they were. Because we're trapping more of the steam in, that'll help distribute the heat more, which sometimes it's not an issue if I can shake the pan around, but with it a little bit more crowded, I figured this makes sense. So I'm gonna wait probably five minutes and then we'll start bringing in the color. Oh, hear that sound? I'm reducing the heat to low. Uh, I don't usually cover my dyeing because I like to be able to see what's happening, but maybe it's just because my house is so much colder in the winter. I think I might do that more. So now we need to just cross my fingers that none of these stock solution bottles are clogged at all. And it's okay if I mess up. But my plan is to do a little bit of pink on those three, and see I already went over, to do a little bit of pink near the back, and then we're gonna do a lot of pink right here. And we're just gonna start with this, see how things spread, and see how it goes, because that came out pretty quickly and I was not moving things around very much at all. And so I should, Always make sure to shake these. I made these stock solutions yesterday. Okay, so now with our orange, I'm gonna do a little bit of orange there, a little bit of orange there, and then a lot of orange here. So you get a sense of what my pattern's gonna be like. Uh, things are very, very likely to spread a fair amount. And so we're gonna do this little by little because these are 1% stock solutions. I may decide that when I do more of this kind of thing, that maybe we would do it untwisted. Maybe we would do it with, uh, I'd make more dilute stock solutions. But yeah, okay, now for our yellow, we're gonna do a little bit there, a little bit there, and then go heavier here. And it's okay if some pops of these colors drip. Uh, I hope you get a feel for this pattern, this idea. And I do see the pink spreading a bit and I see a little bit going into the water. Uh, all of that is good and we'll add more as we go. So doing our, our green. And I don't know, this is just like fun. I think that this is something that I will probably have to do on a soft blank because I am just enjoying how it is looking right now. Okay, so for our frozen, we go frozen there, heavier frozen here, and whoop, that's a little bit more frozen over there. But that's part of the fun of one pan. So you can envision how I could do this and do like, you know, one stripe of orange 
all of the pink I want in one stripe of purple and do a whole pan in the pink kind of colorway. And then I would be less nervous about flipping. But that also wouldn't give some of the fun, like random flair that we have. The This is a very, I'm starting with the purple over there, a very graffiti feel. I did not really do a line over there. And I do need some purple down here because one of my goals with this colorway and with some other ideas I have for this series is to allow things to be a bit cyclical. So whether you want to do a sideways cowl, the pink and the purple can connect and fit in. It doesn't have to start with the pink and end with the purple. You could do something and start with the yellow and end with the green. And I want the sets to feel like you could do something that just feels continuous. And so that is one of my goals. But now, ooh, this is fun. So. I have no idea how much things are going to spread or not, uh, so this is exciting. And at this point, I definitely feel like I'm going to want to dye the other side, but I'm also going to need to give this a little bit of time. Uh, where is aha, my turkey baster? So there's a little bit of some purple pop up there, so I just wanted to a little bit of blue on the side right there. I'm just washing some dye off of the sides, just a little bit, just to help. And then I'm going to bring over uh, my tin foil and turn up the heat to medium low, just to give it a little bit more heat, but we're trapping the heat in. And I also don't need to necessarily worry as much about it going dry. And so I think I'm going to wait about 11 minutes, I think, because that's what the time on my timer. So we'll wait that and then we'll check back in. Um, but I am gonna lower the heat a little bit. All right, let's remove the foil. And I think this is looking pretty good. We've definitely got some spread, but not thing like wild. I am enjoying the scribble. So I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and flip because it doesn't look like things are having like wild transfer. And if I flip like one at a time, we can, like one set at a time, we can see how those colors may or may not transition. Uh, and there's definitely some spread, which is good. Um, but I am super, super curious to hear. If your team do sets all in one pan, like I'm doing right here, or if you're more of team, do each color individually. Because this is something that I absolutely love, love doing, but there's pluses and minuses for doing it both ways. In this case, there's really only one way I can put the sets together because we have 18 skeins of three different yarn bases in here. But there are circumstances where if it was 18 skeins of all one type, I could decide to move it around a little bit to create the finished sets. And there's something fun and random and freeing about that. But I also would have just as fun doing, I guess, six pans of 18 uh, later on. So again, I am curious to hear what your thoughts are on this process. But now, as I, oh, <laughs> think about what I am doing. I am going to continue adding our colors on to finish up this second side. And that's probably where I'll stop things. But let's speed things up. Um, I'm seeing some water in there, but the colors over here, there's some pink. See the purple pop. I mean, I'm very, very curious. So there's definitely a lot of, like, to see how far some of these colors are going down. I mean, not necessarily that far down 
into the minis. That's part of what makes this a bit of an experiment. Uh, so now there's a few different ways we could go because I could, ooh, that, that's looking really cool. It's looking really cool because we could move it in a way to add more color. It's always hard on the yak to know. Yeah, because see the one on the end has a lot of color. But I think that what I want to do, oh, I feel like the poor yak, because of the circumstances, because if I start and stop, the edges are getting more of the colors, which, you know, was not the intent or the goal, but poor yak. Somehow, <laughs> I put it in the middle, being like, I want it to get a little bit more something. And so, yeah, but I think I'll just do one more round, attempting to try to, like, rotate this into a way that maybe has a little bit less color. Uh, the, the coverage is pretty good, but I know that we're going to have some white in here and so we'll see we'll see how this goes and how uh, we want to edit this going forward it's possible that for all the fun I'm having having things twisted like this that may not be the way that I want to go in the end it's possible that the way that I decide to go will be with things untwisted one color at a time because then I'll be able to get more coverage over more of the colors. But anyway, let's add on some dye. It has been 15 minutes and nice and steamy. I think that that actually is helping a lot. And the nice thing is I am not seeing a lot of color in the water and moving stuff I think is helping spread some of the color down a little bit. This has a very very like neon graffiti kind of feel and I'm honestly here for it. So if I were going to scale this up a lot I would potentially remove these from the pan and put it into a steamer basket to steam it for longer. But I'm not going to be dyeing more right now because I want to see what these look like to know how I want to finish things off. So what I'm going to do is add, oh dear, water outside of the pan. Let me go clean that up. All cleaned up. Oh goodness. All right. Let me finish adding this water in. We might have some more colors spread a little bit. Uh, I'm seeing some of that pink maybe spread, but this will allow the, yarn, the colors a chance to set a bit. So I am now going to turn up the heat and I mean the covering has been working well, so I probably will go ahead and cover it even though we have plenty of water here. And so I'm going to let this heat uh, for 30 minutes. All right, let's remove the foil. And we can see that colors have definitely spread out some now. And with the exception of the frozen blue. So there is a non-zero chance that I might decide to take these three blue skeins and over dye them with a light depth of shade of Frozen, just to have some more of the spread quality that we have for some of these other colors. But we will, we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna turn off the heat now and let things cool. Uh, the still feels very, very fun, but clearly adding the more water did help these colors spread uh, with, you know, with the exception of the blue. But I am excited to see where things end up. So we're gonna let this cool completely. All right, things have not cooled completely, but I do want to pump up the like blue spread a little bit down there. So I am going to start to remove uh, a bunch of these minis and set them in a pan, mainly because I was checking and I didn't see any 
like spread there. So the green isn't the greenest, but is fine. And actually the purple can go in its own pan. Things are actually fairly cool. Uh, a bit cooler than maybe I thought. What I'm gonna do is our blues. I'm gonna bring them out. The purple pops, which you know will always be very pink. That's just the nature. But what I wanna do here is help these three feel a little bit more blue. And here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take some of our blue and pop it into the water here. And I'm gonna need to do more than that. But that is the general premise of what I am doing, is that we're taking some blue and letting that color sort of spread and wash over the yarn just a little bit. And I don't even know if it's helping yet because I'm still seeing like tons of like pink in here. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm just going. Who knows, Rebecca? Maybe you'll regret this. Uh, but I just want some like elements of it being a little bit more blue, you know? The pink and green in there is fine, but uh, it needed, the other ones just felt like the, the brightness of the colors that they were originally, and that was just missing here. And so, who knows, maybe I'll add a little bit more, but we're gonna heat things up to increase our blue. And you know, you can have them in the pan and flip it. A little hard to see on the yak but okay I'm starting to feel we they've, there's a lot of green a lot of purple in here but I'm starting to feel a little bit more blue so we're gonna need to heat this for at least 30 minutes but I will check in um, and every once in a while just come and give it like a good a good stir you know maybe I could swap frozen out because that's the blue I use for my neons with like turquoise or something because <laughs> That's a color that is known to bleed. But I've always liked Frozen in with my neon rainbow configurations. So yeah, we'll, we'll see if I feel a need to adapt. But this is making these skeins feel more blue. So I think it'll fit there a little bit better. But anyway, I'm gonna finish waiting. I mean, the time isn't remotely up yet, but this is making them more blue compared to the green, which has a lot of yellow on it. I mean, the green could potentially benefit from a little bit of that blue, but I'm gonna leave that. And same with the purple, but I'm gonna leave both because the purple does feel different from the pink, which has a lot more orange in it. And so I think that that still works, even if that feels like a lot more pink. And so, yeah, hopefully this won't feel out of place uh, next to the others, but this just had a lot more white and less spread overall and so I felt like it just needed that little bit of something. Yeah, I think that that's good. The thing with dyeing yarn is that you're only done when you decide that you're done. So you're done when you decide, okay, I'm satisfied with this color, let's go. And you can always like edit and tweak if things didn't turn out the way you wanted. Now you could take that too far, but you know, I, I think a little bit of, I wish there was more blue. Okay, let's add more blue. But I definitely think as fun as this was, I, when I'm going for this kind of feel with these bright neon colors, I think that I will dye individual skeins, single colors, and do six batches of that. Because I think that that could help me build them to the amount of color that I want. Even though they won't all blend together, I can really focus on a yellow moment and adding some pops of color without that color maybe overwhelming it. And so I may not even do it twisted. I don't know, I'll have to think on that one. But as you're watching, let me know in the comments if you were gonna do one pen at a time, would you have a single color? Would you dye the skeins while they're still twisted or not? 
Okay, the dye bath has cleared, and I'm gonna turn off the heat and remove these so we can set them aside to cool. And so, I don't know, that's the purple. It's a little bit of a jump, shoot. Actually, that's not so bad. That's not so bad, okay. I am going to let this cool and then we'll open them up and see. I squeezed out the water from these minis and then uh, opened them up to get a feel for how our color progression goes. Okay, this is actually really, really cute. The blue isn't quite as bright and neon, but it still works. It still works, so it's fine. Not perfect, but fine. Uh, I don't know. It's funny. What's funny to me is that the green feels very, very yellow because of the radioactive, and the yellow feels very, very orange. Like, it's much more golden yellow than neon yellow. So, I'm not sure. I do think I will mix it up when we go for the next round. Uh, but what I don't know is if I want to dye twisted or not. I like some of these elements from having it twisted. I like the like little patches of color. I think that's fun. So I'm on the fence. What I do know is that I now need to go wash these rainbow sets. So let's go do that right now. I just added some dish soap into our water here, which is only looking cloudy because it is aerated <laughs> a bit with the sink. But we should still be able to see if we have any color coming out, and I see nothing, which is great. That's the one concern with neon colors, is that they can bleed. So let's fill this up again. And check and see, there is no color bleeding. So I am gonna finish rinsing out the soap, and then I'll put this through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and in the meantime, we are gonna play with another version of this colorway. For my next version of the colorway, we have our sparkle base, the That Yak base, and the Crazy 8 DK that we used before. To this, I wanna add one set of Wolta Dye Force Platinum Sock that is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and I'm also gonna add two sets of the High Twist MCN yarn. And this yarn is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And so I thought it would be fun because these dyes spread so much to just see if we do see a difference in the way that these bases absorb the dye. We're only gonna have 200 grams of yarn in each dye pan, which is plenty so we can have things spread out really nicely, but we also, we'll be able to compare these different bases. And if one of them, like the Platinum or our Crazy 8, absorbs more dye than some of the others, since we're moving things around more for this stage, we'll know and, well, maybe we'll know and maybe we'll have some conclusions about that in the end, or otherwise we're just gonna have this really fun colorway on a lot of different yarn bases. I'm going to pre-soak all of the yarn in just plain tap water for 30 minutes and then we'll start dyeing. I squeezed out a bunch of the pre-soaked water from our 200 grams of yarn and then poured on water with vinegar that was mixed at a ratio of four tablespoons of white vinegar to eight cups of water. I wanted to add enough water to just barely cover the yarn. I don't mind if the colors we add spread out a little bit more, but this time, since we're dealing with untwisted minis, we don't have the resist that we had previously, so the colors may spread more. But we also don't have the potential cross-contamination and mixtures of blue and orange, potentially, because in the first set, we are dyeing pink with some pops of orange and purple, and that is really it. The goal is to have some variation in different tones and things in here, but there will also be variation in the total amount of dye that I add on each set because, well, each one's done individually and I'm dying by feel. But I'm very excited to see how this more planned set turns out. 
especially because really this is a more logical way to dye this type of colorway. I just enjoy playing around with things in one pan, seeing how localized you can keep the color, how much they spread out, and things like that. During the dyeing process, I added more water as was needed, but really tried to keep things fairly low overall because I know a lot of these colors are gonna spread and I wanted to limit that a bit. As for our color groupings, I continued with the same plan where each set would have one main color with a few hints or pops of the colors that would show up on either side of it in a rainbow, just to connect things together. It's fun how it does sort of shift the main color character a little bit, but I also just think that it is really fun. And since these mini skeins are a little bit shorter than full skeins tend to be, uh, that means that the repeats will come a little bit faster and I don't know, I'm just really enjoying how this is coming together. Once I was satisfied with the color, I added more water into the pan so that way things could float more freely, let it heat for 30 minutes, and then either let it cool completely in the pan if there was still some color I wanted to absorb, or removed it and set it aside to cool before washing it. Either way, making sure the yarn was completely cool before we got to the washing step. Here is our prototype colorway we created by dyeing twisted mini skeins all in one pan on our sparkle base, our that yak base, and crazy eight, the DK weight base. And with the exception of a major difference because the that yak is much deeper, these do feel rather similar. And looking at them dry, I really like the way that the colors are interspersed with one another. I know I added a bit more blue, I believe, towards the end, but I think I do like the way things ended up. I'm gonna go twist these up now. Before I twist up the Crazy 8 prototype, I wanted to do a quick comparison with the colorway we created where we dyed each color in a single pan versus dyeing twisted minis all in one pan. And the colorways are actually pretty different. Because these weren't twisted, the colors spread a lot more. And since the colors were spreading, we ended up with things that are a lot more saturated. And the color sections are larger. Again, because when I added the colors, they spread more. And I mean, I think they're both really, really fun, but ooh, it would be hard for me to say which I prefer. Uh, because I think even though like both of these have pink, purple, and blue, and both of these have yellow, green, and orange, ultimately they are very, very different. So it's hard to do a comparison. So it's hard for me to say which is my favorite. And I want to give this just a little moment of its own before I go twist this one up as well. And then we'll take a closer look at the six pan set versus the one pan set. Now that things are twisted up, I would say that just like with the depth of shade sometimes on the yak, the yellow and green are a little hard to tell apart, but not bad. However, I think that when I wrap these up, I will probably wrap them up in this way, like red, orange, yellow, but I think that there is something to be said for arranging the sets like this with the purple at the beginning because that feels a lot more pink and this one is more orange. And I think that this may work slightly better as just a progression because I feel like a lot of the orange shows through here. Um, but you absolutely could, you know, start with say the yellow and go like, go like that. So there are, options. And so I think, you know, I'll set them up like this. However, you can certainly use them however you'd like. I think our six pot colorway could also benefit from moving the purple over in terms of the overall progression. Uh, I do think it would be worth, and again, not today, but I think I should try this again using Caribbean blue, which may bleed more than the frozen. The frozen may not be pigmented enough to do as much spread and bleeding. And so that may help uh, feel more cohesion with our blue with the rest. But whichever way you do it, uh, it still works. I think one other option, given that we were dying with liquid dyes here, would be to mix 
the secondaries, starting with our primary. So if we took just the frozen, the fluorescent lemon and fluorescent fuchsia and mix those together to create what felt like the best neon orange and neon green, maybe we would have a little bit more control over the color, although maybe not because I'm not sure what the blue pigment is in the purple pop and the radioactive and I'm pretty sure the components of fluorescent safety orange are just lemon and fuchsia. We also do have these colors on our Yak Blend. I think we have 10 different sets here total. And so I'm gonna go start twisting these up. I'm about to arrange these into sets, but this is so pretty. I needed to get one more shot of it. I love, love all of these colors together, but I think one of the standouts for me is the pink colorway with the orange and the little bit of pops of purple. Uh, I think that I would love at some point to do a fuchsia and safety orange colorway and then use some purple pop speckles on it. I think that that would just be beautiful as a standalone colorway. And it would work well because purple pop speckles with the blue and then that bleeds to pink. And so I think this is something I want to explore more of. Don't get me wrong, I like a lot of the other colors too, but this one as just like a standalone colorway really calls to me. If my goal was to see if I could replicate these one pan fades using six pans, the best kind of comparison would have been for me to dye twisted skeins again. Uh, because with the resist we would have preserved more white, had much more var a variegated feel in the yarn. And ultimately I went a different direction and I dyed the skeins untwisted versus being twisted up. And so I think someday doing a single pan fade untwisted versus twisted could be a really interesting experiment to do uh, because I like what I created in one pan and I like what I created in six pans. It's just the techniques are different between the two sets because the act of untwisting the skeins makes the colorway different because there's no way to apply that resist. And clearly I added a lot more dye when it was untwisted. So therefore those skeins are a lot more neon and vibrant. I will add that, I mean, I guess there's a hint of orange on the green skein here, but otherwise there wasn't a lot of cross contamination within one pan. It's possible that some of the colors could be a hair more muted uh, if there were some things that spread, but really things were pretty much where I wanted them to be color wise. And so it did work really well. In the six pan colorway, we dyed Crazy Eight, That Yak, and the Sparkle, Silver Selena Sparkle yarn. I forget if it's Sheila's Sparkle or Sheila's Glitter. But we also dyed the High Twist Superwash MCN and Platinum Sock. And I think that the only real difference I feel here is that the colors in the Platinum Sock, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, are a hair more vibrant, a hair brighter or more saturated than the corresponding colors in the Superwash MCN um, that you see here. Um, so everything was dyed in one pan, but, you know, I would say that the platinum orange is a bit brighter and the platinum pink is a bit brighter. Uh, the Superwash MCN is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. So there is a bit of a difference and it's possible that the platinum just sort of sucked up more of the dye while we were in the pan. It could also have to do with where in the pan things were. The Superwash MCN was bundled with Crazy 8 and the Platinum was bundled with a That Yak and our Sparkle Sock, but the Sparkle also feels just like a hair more muted than the Platinum, so it's possible the Platinum sucked up more dye. If you wanted to talk about what's more proper from a dyeing perspective, dyeing each color separately is a more proper technique versus doing it all in one pan or all in one jar. However, I enjoy the fun of setting up a pan of color and trying to create something that'll work as a fade in there. And doing that with six colors is a little bit more challenging than doing it with say three colors and blending them. I'm gonna turn off the lights and turn on 
my black light so you can see a bit of the glow. Uh, oof. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera. Certainly you can see it on the yak, which is in the middle, but it's a lot more blinding <laughs> if you're looking at our white bases, especially when it comes to that lemon yellow pigment that is the brightest. The pinks definitely still glow, but the brightest is always gonna be that fluorescent lemon. And here is also a little comparison of how they glow when we look at the one pan versus six pan. And also looking at the yak. Uh, you can see oof, you can see that pink glow because of the angle. So anyway, this would be more dramatic if I could remove all the natural light, which I can't, but it's still rather fun. One of the reasons why I wanted to do a whole rainbow mini series is that there are so many different ways you could take one theme and one palette to create your colorways. I could think of so many different ways we could play around with this neon rainbow variegated progression. And I know I'm gonna be wanting to play with some of those more in the future. There are still many nights of the 2022 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series ahead. Every night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, a new video will premiere, and I will be in the live chat room as many nights as possible to react to the videos and hang out with you. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I love answering questions and facepalming when I notice editing mistakes and things like that. <laughs> there are many ways you can support the content here. I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, I have a Patreon, and now you can join a Chemnitz Tutorials channel membership for custom Chemnitz themed emotes and badges next to your username that show how long you've been a member. Now, I don't know yet if I've made any editing mistakes in this video, but since I react to them and that's when I notice those mistakes is when I'm reacting in the premieres, maybe I will need to get a Rebecca facepalm emote. <laughs> Let me know what you think down in the comments. But anyway, as we prepare for SMSMS night three, we are gonna move away a little bit from our neon colors. Do you have any guesses of what kind of rainbow set I will be dyeing up tomorrow night? I cannot wait to hear your guesses. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.